There are many ways to categorize programming languages, and one of the most fundamental ways is how they do type checking. If you're coming from a scripting language like Python or JavaScript, then the following code will be familiar. The variable x has no fixed type. It is free to be changed as the programmer sees fit. But what happens if we have a function which expects a variable to be an int, but we pass it a string? We will get some sort of runtime error, like an exception. These languages are known as dynamically typed. The checking if a type is valid for a given operation is done at runtime. C++, like C, Java, and C Sharp, is statically typed. That is, the checking of type information is done at compile time. So, trying to pass a string to a function that expects an int won't even compile. In C++, that means the programmer must specify the type for each variable and that type is immutable. With statically typed languages, we trade off the flexibility and convenience of not having to define all of our types for the safety of the compiler doing all our type checking for us, and therefore catching bugs before our program can even run. This video was intended to be quite short, just list the fundamental types and their usages. However, as is often the case with C++, there are many nuances. Some of these details are just curios of the language, a way to impress your friends down the pub, but won't have any real impact on your project. However, some of these have real implications that could lead to strange and unexpected behaviour. So let's get into it. Void. Void is a special type that represents no value. You cannot actually declare a void variable, but you can declare a function to return void if it has no return value. Integers. Integers are specified in two parts, signness and size. The size specifies how many bits will be used to store the number, and therefore the range of values it can represent. The signness specifies whether only positive or positive and negative numbers can be represented. The built-in integral types are short, int, long, and long long. The sign that specifies are signed, which is positive and negative, or unsigned, which is positive only. If you don't specify the signness for one of these integer types, then C++ will assume it is signed. And here we have some examples of a short, an unsigned int, and a long long. So how big are these types? Well, a cursory investigation might lead you to believe that an int is 4 bytes. However, here we find one of the first curios of C++ where the standard doesn't quite meet our expectation. The standard provides the following guarantees. A short is at least 16 bits, an int is at least 16 bits, a long is at least 32 bits, and a long long is at least 64 bits. This means that all these types could be different sizes on different platforms, and they only have to conform to the minimum guaranteed size. Most modern platforms have a 16-bit short and a 32-bit int, however Windows and Unix do differ on the size of a long. C++ also provides the fixed width integer types. These are defined in the C student header. Prefer using these types where possible because it means you're explicit about the size and signness. Floats. For representing real numbers, that is, numbers with a decimal place, C++ provides float, double, and long double. The C++ standard does not specify how any of these should be implemented, because why would it? All it guarantees is that a double is at least as precise as a float, and a long double is at least as precise as a double. In reality, most modern platforms will use IEEE 754 binary 32 for float, and IEEE 754 binary 64 for double, and either make long double the same as double, or use IEEE 754 extended types. By default, C++ assumes all literals with a decimal place are a double, unless you add the f suffix to it, in which case C++ will treat it as a float character. These types are for storing single characters, however such a simple statement hides a lot of complexity. Char is the most basic character type, and is guaranteed to be one byte in size. Now, C++ doesn't guarantee how many bits are in a byte, obviously, but most modern platforms have an 8-bit byte. Is char signed or unsigned? Well, C++ doesn't specify this, however, like the integer types, you can specify a signed char or an unsigned char. Because C++ leaves the signness up to the platform, char, signed char, and unsigned char are all three distinct types. If we think of char as a one-byte integral type, then regardless of whether it's signed or unsigned, we can guarantee we can store at least 0 to 127 in it, and this is enough to cover all ASCII characters. Things get even more complicated when you throw in wchart, char8t, char16t, char32t, so C++ strings will be a separate video. Bool. A boolean variable stores one of two states, true or false. Nothing too weird about balls, but the size of a ball is left up to the implementation. Arrays. An array is a sequence of values of the same type. They are stored contiguously, i.e. one after the other in memory, with no gaps. The size of an array is fixed when you declare it, and it cannot be resized. We can either specify the size of the array up front, or we can let the compiler infer it from the number of arguments we give it. We can then use the square bracket operator to access these values. 
C++ provides no runtime bounds checking on an array, therefore it's possible to read and write past the end or before the beginning of an array. This is undefined behavior and is a potential security risk. Const. When we declare a variable in C++, it is mutable. That is, it is possible to change the value stored within it. However, by using the const keyword, we tell the compiler that we want the variable to be immutable and generate a compiler error if we try and modify it. There are two main reasons to use const. One, if you don't plan on modifying a variable, then having the compiler enforce that will prevent bugs. Two, there are certain optimizations the compiler can make if it knows the value won't change. So if you want safer and faster code, prefer to make all variables const, and only make them non-const when you actually need to change them. This is sometimes known as const correctness. Auto. Declaring the type of a variable can be tedious, especially when the compiler can infer that from the assigned value. C++ provides the auto keyword for automatically deducing a variable type. And here we have a is deduced to an integer, b to a const double, c to a float, d to a const bool, and e to whatever the return type of this function is. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, then consider subscribing. Also, leave a comment if there's any part of C++ you would like covered in a future video.